we are now on step four C. The key thing to remember when you get here is make sure that your sheets are all still grouped because if they're not, you're going to have to do each and every worksheet individually. So the easiest way to total these, oh, I'm so sorry, enter the word total right here in A16 as directed by the book. And then if you take your cursor and select all the numbers but go all the way down to the one blank cell and then hit auto sum, ta-da, you're done. And you can look and double check every page and see that it has been done on every page. Now the thing that has not been done on every page, as you can see, is that these cells were not widened. So I'm going to go back right now, group all of the sheets, and um, go to one that isn't widened and widen them all by doing auto fit like this. So the cells that are already auto fit won't be affected in any way. And we should be good now if we check each one. Check that out. Yay! While we have these cells still selected, we should change the format. Even though I am doing this differently than I've done in the past, Professor Bushnell is still going to hold you responsible for the guidelines as outlined on the professional formatting worksheet provided for this course. So click on more number formats. And you're going to format this in accounting as directed according to that sheet. No decimal places and no symbol. Now, that being said, proper accounting format would put dollar signs down here at the bottom. If that is the only place you put dollar signs, then you need to also include in U.S. dollars up here at the top. Otherwise, it is not completely self-explanatory, which is the point of doing things differently than directed by the textbook, is so that it is easy to see in two quick seconds what the heck you're looking at. Okay, so being that we formatted these, oh, and this should be a percentage as is mentioned in the professional forming worksheet, but if you make it a percentage, right now at this stage, it's probably going to be commented on as incorrect. I do not know, but since we are taking a new tactic and sticking with the textbook exactly as it says, I recommend that you undo that and do exactly what the book says. With the exception of where the book says with a comma and no decimal, that's just accounting, period. What you do about the dollar sign is up to you. If you take the dollar sign off as the professional formatting worksheet dictates, then you're going to need to insert up here the wording in US dollars, just as we've done before. If you do that, there is a possibility that when you submit this assignment for grading, included in the comments at the end will be that your formulas are robbed wrong because they're going to be one line off. I do not know. You can choose to do it exactly as a textbook, or you can do it like this, or you can save all this and do it at the end. So, moving on to the next step, again, make sure that your sheets are still grouped together and we are going to bold, let's see, we've done total, so we're on D, display monthly sales numbers, okay, we've passed that. Um, bold ranges, A, 4, to A. okay, so this is what the book wants you to bold. Select these. And then if you hold control and select these headings as well, oh, and projected increase. Uh, I'm not sure if the book says that, but anyway, let's, those should be selected. Sheets should be grouped and you should hit control B and everything's bold. Don't project it also. Okay, so now for this page, we are on the last and final instruction for F, which is ungroup worksheets. Yay! So let's save it.